All right, so welcome back everyone. I am Sovereign and today we are going to do the NRF, the Nation Rebirth Facility. This is actually the second time I'm recording this. The first time got FUBAR because I had TS being recorded. So we're gonna do this again and then we're good to go. So this one isn't too bad. You basically just warp in and then you shoot all the red things and then you get paid and you warp out. Not too bad. All right, so right now we're just waiting for our logies to be ready, and then we'll warp in and start shooting. Okay. So right now I'm still AAA, so I'm going to be burning away from the fleet at first. Normally you would just stay where you are and then just start shooting stuff. But since I'm the anchor, I'm going to get to my position and then start shooting things. So a little bit different, but other than that, it's the same as what you would be doing. And I already lost one of my drones, which is really frustrating. So you'll see in the next recording with the TCRC, because that was the first in my time. I only had three because I lost my ogre. But I got the ogre, got my drones, and then on the last sight, I lost a hobgoblin because it got killed. So these guys really like to shoot drones because they're jerks. All right, so I'm going to burn over here. And my warp drive. And normally I'd be sitting still and shooting this Mara because once again, we don't like Maras. Maras are the remote repair support cruisers. And they're very, very, very nasty. But this guy's going to be going really fast. I'm going really fast in the opposite direction. I'm not going to hit shit. Oh, I hit him for 212 damage. All right, so let's get the hobgoblins onto the drone bunny so that he can start killing all of these frizzicates. So all these things, the Ramis, the Oitra, the Shmales, the Renans, all that is his job. And he's going to do that with the power of 50 light drones. Pretty scary. All right, so let's see. We're almost there, about halfway. I'm just going to keep burning. I'm going to try to shoot this Mara, which is probably not going to happen. So we're actually going to switch off of that and go on to this Delta. And let this, yeah, there he goes, he's gone. Oh, went too far. We're going to burn back a little bit. We're good to go. You don't have to worry about any of this, because if you were a DPS ship, then you would just be keeping at range the DPS anchor. And if you were a sniper ship, then you would just keep being me at range. So you wouldn't have to worry about all this, you'd just be focusing on shooting things, unlike me, because I'm not shooting things, because I'm busy talking and moving. But you would just be able to basically just click on me, keep it range, 5k, and then just forget about your position, because that's my job. It's my job to make sure you are in the spot that you're supposed to be at. And then you can just sit here and just start shooting things. So now the rest of the site is basically just shooting all of these targets. So normally, since I'm a sniper, I should be shooting these lighters. But since I am so far out of position of where all the other snipers are, these position, these C, the Violate, is actually not a very good target for me to be shooting. So I'm going to actually help out the DPS by shooting these Osties and everything else. So I'll be able to apply my damage a lot better on these than the other ones, which is normally a bad idea. You don't want to just be shooting whatever you feel like, but in this case, I mean, I have tachyons. I'm not going to shoot something at 14 kilometers with tachyons. Like, that, that doesn't make sense. Alright, so we have this first spawn, and then we're going to have a second spawn over where the Vindicators are, you can see that all the short range ships have already moved because they are moving with the anchor. And the anchor already knows where the next spawn is because the spawns, the amount of ships and the type of ships are always different. They have a certain bound, but they're randomized, but the location of them is always fixed. So we know the next spawn is gonna happen right around here. So they're all set up basically like a trap ready to destroy the second wave. And then once the second wave is almost dead, then they'll move over to the third wave. And then the fourth wave is going to pop up right over here. So before the fourth wave happens, I'm actually going to burn a little bit away from it, just so that we're not right on top of them. It's not really too much of a big deal. Most of the time, you don't even burn away. But it's just 
kind of nice to not have a bunch of stuff spawning eight kilometers away when you're shooting tachyons. All right, so I am a sniper, so I'm going to shoot these antims first. There's four of them. It's not too bad. And then I'll work on these U-lines because they are, if you'll see, these guys are way far away from the DPS because they're out here, DPS is out here, they're never going to shoot these. So that's why we are here to shoot them instead. And then where did the U-lies come in? U -li oh, okay, the U-lies are out there. And the anti All right, so everything else is out there. So this is all what we're shooting. And we're shooting it because it is really far away from the Vindicators. So you'll see that like in the TPPH, there weren't very many numbers. Just only in like the very, very beginning, there were a few numbers just because they're really far away and there were high profile logistics ships that needed to be taken out in order to make it fast. But in this case, you can definitely tell that there is a good reason to have sniper ships because now we can mop up all of these targets and then still be within optimal range for all of the other targets at the same time. Whereas the Vindicators can't be on optimal range of both of these. So we need both of them. The Vindicators to mop up all of these very quick, and then the Snipers to shoot both of these at the same time without having to move around too much. All right, so we're going to shoot these, all the letters, of course, in order from D, E to F. And if, for example, another ship were to spawn, or if the FC forgot something and then tagged that as C, then we would immediately stop shooting D and then go to C. So it's not like you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then wrap back around. You always shoot the lowest number or lowest letter before anything else. Even if it showed up on the grid after, or even if it was tagged after, you always shoot the lowest one. And you never, ever, 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 ever shoot Tag J. I don't remember if I've talked about Tag J or not, because I've done more recordings than I'm actually going to put on YouTube. But Tag J is do not shoot. You do not shoot Tag J ever, because Tag J will produce the next spawn. And we are purposely withholding the next spawn, either because we don't want, like we want to clean up the support frigates and cruisers first, or if like a bunch of Logi DC'd, or if the FC DC'd, or on-grid boosts aren't working, or off-grid boosts aren't working, then we need to fix that before we get into a dangerous situation. And if you do shoot Tag J, and if you don't notice, and if you continue to shoot it, we'll just boot you from fleet. And you don't want that because the whole point of you being a fleet is to make money. All right, so we're gonna shoot the Mara first, because the Mara is an asshole that just reps everyone so we're gonna kill him first and then we'll work on the violate oh, shoot shot the violate on accident all right and then we'll go with the antims and then the ulides again and then our hobgoblins are just moving around with the drone bunny and because they are set to assist they shoot whatever he shoots so we don't even have to worry about that at all which is nice because we have enough on our plate already with trying to figure out what to shoot and when to shoot it what crystals to use are we in the right position etc etc smack talking on ts you know important stuff very important stuff i am shooting the wrong person i am a terrible terrible pilot i was supposed to be shooting antims and I'm pretty sure on the TPPH, during the Utuni wave, I accidentally shot the Utunis when I also was supposed to be shooting Antims. Because the Antims usually aren't tagged just because they die so quickly that you can just start free firing on them and they'll all go down within a couple of seconds. But I think the FC actually put on comms to shoot the Antims, but I missed that part because I was too busy talking. So, whoops. Don't be like me. Don't. Do as I say, not as I do. Because otherwise it will not go according to plan. All right, so someone is shooting C before B, and C died before B. That's not good. You're not supposed to do that, but it's fine. I mean, optimally we won't want that to happen, but at the end of the day, everything's dying. It's a pretty low risk situation because we're at the end of a wave, so it's all good. And the next wave 
it is going to have the Atunis. So I should have probably moved out of here, but it's fine. You'll see that the Atunis are probably going to spawn about right here. About eight and a half kilometers. Holy crap, they're right on top of us. Alright. Oh, one Utuni. Okay, so the Utunis, like I said earlier, the spawns are not random, or they're not fixed. The amount of different types of ships will vary. So for the Atunis, you can have anywhere from one to three. And if you have three, that's pretty bad. It can be very dangerous because that's a lot of cap pressure. But now with only one, cap pressure is gone. Basically, this entire wave is now a non-issue. As long as everyone's on top of their broadcast, no one's going to die. And it's just smooth sailing from here until we get our payout. And this is pretty much, we just have to kill all of this. Once all this is gone, then we're done and we get paid. So let's finish off these Antums and then some more Ulies. And I think the recording where I talked about the names has been nuked. Why am I? ultraviolet but um the names of all of these ships are actually also solar systems in the game so like antum is a system uli is a system i don't know where they are i'm assuming they're systems just because everything else is system. like austin gale that's a system i think it's in galente space and taki is definitely a system tama is a system you guys have probably seen the tamas so far they're little frigates though we don't usually shoot them but that's definitely a system. If you've ever been a pirate, if you've ever been in low sec anywhere near Jita, you know about Tama. Come on, guns. Stop cycling. There we go. All right, so we're just going to finish these up. This is, remember, the uh, medium difficulty, medium speed one. It's faster than a TPPH, but a little bit slower than a TCRC, which would be the next one you see if you're doing this chronologically. And if you're not, then this might be a little confusing to you. But other than that, it should be fine. I miss targeting one of these. We'll target that and start shooting. I mean, really, as a new guy, you just need to make sure that you're on top of your broadcasts and make sure that you are on top of your anchor and make sure you're shooting something. Ideally, we want you to be shooting the next thing in the range, but as long as your guns are firing and as long as you're in the right position and as long as you broadcast, you'll be good to go. And then you can just refine from there to refine to shooting the right things, um, maybe taking on some positions like being the anchor, being the drone bunny or whatever. You can start like already knowing what to shoot so you don't have to wait for the tags, so you don't have to wait for the FC to call, you just know what you're supposed to be shooting at that particular time, and everything else. Another thing I should talk about is SRP. So there's a ship replacement program where you pay into it. Um, every single group will tell you how theirs works. Usually you just pay a flat rate, and then from a certain period to a certain period, like for WTM we have 10 million from downtown to downtown, and that gives you up to 2 billion of coverage, which for most people's ships, you shouldn't have more than 2 billion unless you have just faction mods on everything. Then it'll be a little bit more. And you want to do SRP because if you don't have SRP and your ship blows up, that's on you. Like, you have to now go out and replace a potentially up to 2 billion esque ship, and that's 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 pretty painful and SRP basically protects you as long as it wasn't your fault so like if the Lodgy doesn't rep you in time or if there's just like the FC doesn't call the fleet in but if it's something that you did like if you Leroy a gate or if you didn't broadcast and that's on you but SRP is nice because if you have something like this where you lose a 1.9 billion a ship, you get almost all the money from that back and you can go out and get a new one without having to worry about it. All right, so that was the NRF and I will see you guys next time for the TCRC. Thanks for watching.